All right, well, I am super excited because I just got back from the thrift store and saw this there and love it. Now, I don't normally go into thrift stores anymore because I don't wanna be tempted to buy stuff that we don't actually need, but today we are gonna do a quick kitchen declutter and redecorate because I've had the yellow on the shelves, I think for over a year now. And so it's time to do something a little bit different, freshen it up. So today I'm gonna share with you a new question I have when it comes to decluttering your kitchen. I think it's gonna be really good and help you go another step further with simplifying in here. And then I wanna share, I have two tips when it comes to decorating or styling or that kind of stuff. And so we'll talk about that too. Well, hi, I'm Dawn from The Minimal Mom. We love helping you simplify, declutter, and sometimes even decorate your house. We don't do a lot of decorating, but I have found a trick or two that has made it, I never used to be good at it. And so I found these couple tips and it has made me way better. So that's been kind of fun. But this video is actually part of our mega motivation collaboration. And so I have over 20 other friends that are decluttering and decorating their kitchens along with me. So I'll share that playlist down below, but let's do the not so fun part first. We're gonna do a little decluttering first and then I'm gonna show you where we're gonna put this beauty. So I'm kind of excited about that. It was 50% off too. So it was just like speaking my love language. I really don't buy a lot of stuff like that anymore though. Anyways. I don't have to justify myself to you, it's fine. Okay, I have a new way that I wanna look at it when we are decluttering the kitchen. So first, what I want you to do is think about a spot in your kitchen that is just not working, that just does not function well, the cupboard's too full, the drawer's too full, there's too much stuff, or it just really doesn't work well. So let's go to that spot in the kitchen, and then I'm gonna ask you this magical question. Okay, so here's what I wanna ask you. I was just looking up the definition of stuff because sometimes when you find like definitions of words, it's like, oh, this is brilliant. This makes so much sense and then it's fun. Um, material of some unspecified kind. Well, that's not super good, stuff. The material of which anything is made. Material be to be worked upon or to be used in making something. Those aren't actually very helpful. And so here's what's so interesting to me. And I think the reason why the definition of stuff is actually like not really anything, I'm gonna close this, it's kind of buggy, <laughs> is because stuff is inanimate. It's usually physical in nature, but it doesn't have feelings or emotions or anything like that. And the other thing about stuff is that stuff is meant really at the core of it to be used and to be useful to us, right? I mean, if we really think about all of the stuff in our house, it has a purpose. Our dishes have a purpose, our silverware, our bowls, our kitchen appliances, our little appliances, big appliances, they all have a purpose and that purpose is to be useful to us. And so most of it, I would say what, 90% of the stuff is it has some kind of purpose. And then we also have the little bit of stuff that's like, decor that the purpose of it is just to enjoy it right it's just to look at and enjoy and that's what we're going to get to in a little bit but really when we look at the bulk of the stuff in our kitchen it's it has a purpose we got it for a specific reason i have my bundt cake pan to make bundt cakes i have my bread maker to make bread i have my bowls to eat cereal out of i have silverware to use to eat and what i think we need to do is to start looking at all of the stuff in our kitchen as it's supposed to serve me and not the other way around. So like I said, if you go to an area of your kitchen that's not functioning well right now and you're like, oh, there are too many cups and glasses, it's hard, they don't stack up nice, we're always having to shuffle them around, if, if they're all clean, they don't fit, well, then why don't we get rid of some of them, right? And for some things like cups, it's like, okay, that's not that big of a deal, until I come to the one that was like passed on from great grandma or I paid a lot of money for. And then all of a sudden it's not just stuff anymore. Then we start, it starts to like bring up all these feelings of guilt. Either I spent money on it or I should have used it or I should have displayed it or I should appreciate it. I certainly can't get rid of it, right? But if we would just go back again to what is the purpose of it? Uh, it's meant to drink water out of is that still serving me? Am I still using it for that? No, it crowds up my closet. No, I've never liked that cup. I don't like the bumps on it or whatever. Then 
why are we allowing this stuff that like literally has like no definition <laughs> in the dictionary why are we letting it clutter up our cabinets and cause us to feel guilt why are we saying like oh but i paid money for it well so does that cause it to somehow serve me better no is it making my life easier no am i just super glad that i have it to look at or admire no so i I'm sorry, why am I keeping it, right? And probably a cup isn't a good example. Let me find something expensive, one second. All right, pulling out the Vitamix. This was, even buying like an open box, uh, it was still like $350. I saved Amazon credit for, I don't even know how long, a very long time to be able to buy this. But if I'm not using it, again, if our stuff is supposed to serve us and support us in life if it's supposed to make our life easier and more enjoyable and this isn't why am i keeping it i know especially with kitchens we hang on to so much stuff that we aren't using because we feel guilty about it and so what if we just allowed ourselves as we make this pass through our kitchen as we look at the places that are not functioning well in our kitchen what if we just allowed ourselves to say okay I'm just gonna ask this question. Is it still serving me? Is it making my life easier? Do I enjoy having it? And if the answer is no, it doesn't matter who gave it to me for what holiday or birthday gift that it was. It doesn't matter how much I paid for it. Like those are actually not logical arguments, <laughs> right? To keep something. And for us just to tell ourselves, I'm not gonna let stuff, this inanimate stuff that is supposed to make my life easier, make my life worse. I'm not gonna clutter up my cabinets with this stuff if it is not serving a purpose. That is that is silly, right? Like I'm trying to think what word I would use with the kids. That is illogical, like that, does, that actually does not make any sense. If this stuff in our kitchen is not serving us, if we are not using it, then it's time to pass it on and let somebody else use it or at least have a chance at using it. Like I'm really glad that somebody donated that blue casserole dish. I think it's a casserole dish. I don't know, you all would probably know better. I'm really glad that somebody donated it so that I can decorate it with it today because it made my heart super happy when I saw it in the thrift store, <laughs> right? But for most of us, we don't have enough room in our kitchen to be giving up space for stuff that is not serving us, that is not making our life easier. Okay, so the real reason I wanted to come over here, our cups and those dishes are actually pretty under control. It's this stuff up here. So when I'm not the one emptying the dishwasher, um, our, store, our food storage containers often get stacked up instead of being stored with the lids on, which is my preferred method, but if other people are helping with dishes, I'm not. I'm obviously not gonna complain about that, right? So what has happened is we've had too many now creep in and now we have way too many of these containers again. So what I wanna do is go back through and put the lids on. But Adeline just asked me uh, the other day when she was putting away dishes, she had said, we don't really use these containers anymore because Tom doesn't pack lunches anymore. And we really only use these. So she had asked me, she was like, could we just get rid of those? And at first, like, honestly, my first thought was like, I paid money for those. I didn't even pay money for these. These were lunch meat containers, right? And I'm like, well, I paid money for those. Why would I get rid of those? But we haven't been using them. Like we literally have not used them. So they are not serving us anymore. And so recognizing that we have a lot of things in our kitchen probably that at one time served us, that it did work well. I did use them on a, on a daily basis, but I have to like, update the inventory, you know, I have to like relook at it and be like, oh right, but I'm not, like I literally have not used these in the past year and we would be totally fine with just these. We do have a shelf up, we have more, we have glass containers too, we use those a lot and especially if that's something we wanna put, like, put in the microwave. So I'm gonna pass these on. I am gonna throw some lids on these and only keep what fits comfortably with the lids on up there and let anything else go and kind of just get it back in check and that's gonna, it's gonna work so much better. And I'll just remind the kids to throw the lids back on when we're putting our food storage containers up there. And whenever I'm doing this too, I'd like to just take a quick moment, like straighten everything back up, just so it all looks really nice again. Everybody likes that. Everybody likes to open the doors and have it all, everything nice in there. So I'm just gonna take a second to do that really quick. And then let's move on to the fun stuff and do some decorating. See, this is also good too, because you think all of the lids are the same, but it's not. The blue and the red are different. So 
by having them already on, you don't even have to test different lids. I know what some of you are thinking, but you could fit way more up there if you took the lids off, right? I know, but that is six containers. We never use more than six of those because then, like I said, the shelf above, we have our glass storage bowls. So we never, we never need more than six. But doesn't, like, do you know how easy this is now if I go just to grab one of those containers to put leftovers in it? It is so nice and easy. So I know I've talked about this a lot, but you really have to try it <laughs> before you say that it doesn't work. All right, so now I wanna share my favorite two decorating tips with you and we will apply it to these shelves. So I've had the like yellow decor, yellow and white on there for, I don't know, I think over a year now. So it's kind of time to just to do something different. And I, I wanna add in some like real living plants. And I was thinking of doing kind of just like a monochromatic blue. I like the pop of color with the yellow, but I'm kind of just feeling something a little more natural and calming and maybe even working in a little like more texture with some like more earthy stuff. But tip number one that I absolutely love when it comes to putting decor, especially on shelves like this, is to make a zigzag pattern with your accent color. So on here, my accent color was yellow and oh, the pumpkins in that, that light yellow pumpkins not in the right spot. It's supposed to be by the cake stand to make the, the zigzag yellow. So I'm not even doing a good job. All right, hang on one second. Okay, that's a little better. <laughs> no, so now it zigzags properly. This has been huge because I couldn't figure out in the past, I would put, I like put stuff on the shelf and I'd kind of spread out the color everywhere. And I'm like, why does this not work? Like you look back and you're like, it's close, but it's just not working. It was because I didn't have the color balanced right. So what's cool about this now is now as I go to pull the yellow off and add in blue, I'm going to place my blue things first in that same zigzag pattern. And so that just gives me like a jumping off point. I'm like, okay, I'm gonna zigzag the blue and then I'm gonna fill in from there. All right, so I pulled down all the yellow. So I kind of have this blank slate again. I'm not sure, the only things that I for sure wanna keep up there is that stack of dishes because we use those sometimes when we entertain. And at the very top is a crystal vase that was my grandma's. And then also I do have some milk glass that was my other grandma's. So I would like to leave that on. So just those few things, the rest is totally optional and could I take it or leave it. So there's my yellow stuff down. I wanna show you the blue stuff. I kind of just pulled together anything that I had. I borrowed a couple things from Diana and also from my mom. <laughs> so I didn't want to spend a lot of money on this with of course the exception of this, but it was 50% off. Did I mention that? It was still, so it was $12 and then 50% off of that. So it was still $6, which is a little bit more than I would like to spend because it's, we were looking at the bottom, like it's no like fancy brand or anything, but that's fine. And then I also got this for $1.50. It was $3 and it was 50% off. So I'm trying to keep this all for under $20. And then I'll show you one other thing I bought. So, and then I bought this plant for $5. Um, it's, it's living. Like I said, I want to incorporate some more living, uh, plants. And then my mom, I got cuttings from one of her plants. What are they? Philodendrums? Is that the right name? So I've been propagating them in water. One has actually grown roots. It's just kind of fun. See this guy, he has roots now. So I could plant it in a container, but I really like how easy this is. So my thought is that I'm going to put these guys in here and then I have my blue. So what I'm gonna do, like I said first though, um, now that I have all my, I'm gonna gather all my blue stuff together, is I'm gonna put that in place and then I'm gonna fill in around it. All right, so seeing that vase with the vines in it, I don't know if it's quite the right blue, so I'm gonna try switching it out for this guy. Um, we just used to put like markers and pencils in it. So I'm gonna try switching it out for this and see if it looks a little bit better. Okay, I think we're getting there. Adeline just came in and said it looks cute. So <laughs> that means something. <laughs> um, so I also added some white flowers into the basket. That way the white kind of zigzags too, if that makes sense, because it was just feeling a little bit off balance. But now I feel like with the blue zigzagging one way and the white the other way, I feel like we've got some pretty good balance and I'm pretty happy with it. I think it looks just kind of nice and summery but calm. So. We'll probably leave it that way. Sometimes I play with it a little bit throughout the week, but I also wanna share with you my other favorite design tip. 
And so the last tip that I want to share is when it comes to accent colors. So there's the 60, 30, 10 design rule. And so what that says is 60% of the room should be a dominant color. 30% should be the secondary color and 10% should be an accent. So like in here, when we had the yellow stuff on the shelves, white was our main dominant color, blue was our secondary color, and then this gold color was the accent color. And so now I'm kind of going away from an accent color a little bit. I don't know, maybe you could say it was it's green or something. But for any of you who've been with us for a while, do you remember when I had the red bar stools? And I loved it for a pop of color. I liked having the kind of like red, white, and blue color theme for a little while. But it always bothered me when the stools were at the island. I'm like, something's not right. And then I painted them black and it still wasn't right. It wasn't until we got these blue stools that I was like, okay, good, they kind of blend in. And I, when I look back now, I realize that it was too high of a percentage of the accent color. The stools were over 10%. So our accent color was out of balance and it just, it didn't feel right. Like when you looked at the room, it was like, oh, that's nice. But it was like, there's something that's just a little off. And so now that we have the blue stools, I mean, they're pretty close in color to the island, right? So they kind of blend in, but that actually helps us to keep our colors in balance. So it works much better in this space. And so that rule of the 60, 30, 10 has worked out awesome. Okay. There are kids trying to come in. Can you hear the screen door? <laughs> so we will wrap this up for today. But I hope this helps a little bit when you go to decorate and of course also when you go to declutter. Be tough on this stuff in your kitchen. Ask yourself, is it serving me? Is it making my life easier? Am I really glad that I have it? And if the answer is no, kindly invite it to leave your kitchen. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us. I'll leave that playlist down below for our mega motivation collaboration. This is a fun one. I'm really excited about this topic. So I'll leave that playlist down below, but I hope you have a great day and I will visit with you again soon.